Hey guys, uh, welcome. Um, this is the tutorial video for the Dialog System Manager. Uh, we're going to go ahead today and show you how to get your Dialog System Manager up and running within your Unity project within a couple minutes. So this is our demo scene laid out. I'm going to go ahead and run it up just to show you what it, what it does. Um, right now you can walk up to each individual target and interact with it, um, that NPC or that object, and they'll just give the player their name and then we're debug logging it out to the screen. So um, now that we know that we'll go over this conversation node editor where we'll create our conversations. We'll create our first conversation and you'll see a bunch of options here. The most important thing being the starter. Um, the starter essentially it needs to be named after the NPC or the object that you are trying to start a conversation or dialogue for. So over here, you notice that we interacted with Bob. So we're going to make a starter as Bob. We're going to add a dialogue over here that says, hello, and then add another dialogue that says, how are you? And then we'll save that out. You'll notice as soon as we saved it out, we had this conversations XML peer over here within the XML folder. And this is essentially the XML that our system loads up to be able to make the conversation system work. So now that that XML is loaded, the first things that we're going to have to do is just plop this dialog system right inside of your scene. As soon as you plop that dialog system in your scene, you can go over to the code of my player where I was logging out the name. We'll go ahead and include the using of the dialog system. And then in here, instead of debug logging out, we'll just do dialog system editor dot instance dot start dialog for NPC, pass in the NPC's name, and our system should just work. But a best practice to do, just to show you guys, that we should always, when our dialog conversation is active, shut off any type of player input that may be received. So it's best practice that around your player, wherever input is given, that you just go ahead and set this flag saying that if the dialog system is active, then don't receive any more inputs. If it's not active, it's okay to receive inputs. So that should be it. So now once we go back over to our scene, we spin it up we go talk to Bob we should see our dialogue pop up and sure enough you have hello and continue how are you and there it is for Bob so we'll go ahead and do a couple more examples just to show you guys a little bit of the capabilities of the system but just to let you guys know I'll be making another tutorial for going over all that the conversation node editor is capable of doing right now as well as showing all the customization uh, options for this dialog system manager and I'll make two separate tutorial videos for both of those and I'll link them down in the description below. So we'll go ahead and do this conversation node editor, we'll create one conver another conversation for the grave, we'll add a dialog for that. This dialog will be like something weird about this grave. And then as you saw before, we added a dialog directly to onto another dialog that just gave that to continue button with Bob. We'll add responses to this dialog. Um, and responses can have text that it shows in the response and action taken, which can be an action taken back in your system. And then it can add new response and route to existing dialog. Like I said, I'll go over much more in detail in another, another tutorial video. But for right now, we'll just add these responses. Uh, text, we'll say stare at the grave. And then we'll do touch the grave. For stare at the grave, we'll just say you feel cold. And for touching the grave, you're overcome with fear. We'll go ahead and save this conversation. And now, because of that conversation being saved, when we go to interact with this grave, we should see our conversation to be popped up. And we do. So if something is weird about the grave, stare at the grave or touch the grave, we're going to go ahead and touch the grave, you're overcome with fear.
the end. And you notice when I interact with this target that the conversation doesn't keep popping up. That's by design. Um, if we wanted to make that conversation continue popping up, we would go ahead and make it repeatable. And I'll show you that right now. So if we go over here, we had Dave as a starter as well. We'll add a dialogue for Dave that just says, my name is Dave. And we'll set that as repeatable. And we'll go ahead and save that conversation. And we'll play the scene yet again. And we'll go over here to Dave. My name is Dave. We talk to him again. My name is Dave. Talk to him again. My name is Dave. And you see that this conversation repeats and repeats because you said it is repeatable. Also for Dave, we'll go ahead and show the ability for locked conversations. So Dave has a repeatable, but he also has a locked conversation. So we'll go ahead and do this locked conversation and we'll go ahead and set its phase to unlock to one and this dialog says who are you and we'll go ahead and save that conversation and when we play again you'll notice that when we go over here to talk to Dave my name is Dave you're like oh well he's not saying who are you and that's because it's hidden behind a lock. So I'll go ahead and show you how to implement that. So over here, we'll go ahead and say, if uh, the player gives the input of get key down, we'll just go ahead and do A for the key code. So if I press A, then what I wanna do is I want to call this dialog system unlock conversation for NPC by phase. We'll give that NPC that I'm trying to unlock for and the phase number that I want to unlock. There, you can also um, unlock all conversations of a certain phase. Just call the unlock conversations by phase method and then pass in the phase number and it will unlock every conversation associated to that phase. But now if we go back over to our system and we press continue or press play and we talk to Dave, you're like, oh, well, Dave. He's still not giving us, but as soon as we press A, we talk to him again, who are you? That conversation unlocked, and now he's able to present that to us. It's complete, and because it's not set as uh, com repeatable, Dave continues to repeat his only repeatable conversation. And just to show you a little bit more, um, we'll make one more conversation for Dave and set that as repeatable, and he says, donuts. And we'll save that. And now, because Dave has repeatable conversations, Dave will randomly pull back one of the two repeatables. It's no given order. He just randomly decides which repeatable to pull back, and he'll say one of the following. So whenever the system goes off and fetches repeatable conversations, it will just shoot a random one out to the player. That way, it's not so generic. So the Last conversation we're going to show you is the one with Holly. And with Holly, we're going to take an action taken. So we make a conversation for Holly. We'll add a dialogue here. And, dial and Holly will say, hello, can I shake your hand? And of course, Holly can shake our hand. So we'll add a continue response. A continue response allows for that continue button down at the bottom without an actual response. But it also allows us to take an action on that continue button instead of just going over to the next dialogue um, like we would if we added a dialogue directly to this. So we'll call this handshake and then we'll add a method or add a dialogue that says thanks and that will be it. So we save that, come over to here to our scene and we go and talk to Holly and Holly's like, hello, can I shake your hand? We press continue, thanks. And you notice we get this error up here that says trying to invoke method, action taken, handshake couldn't be called. To be expected. Now what you will need to do um, for any type of actions taken is hook it up in your actions taken manager. It's under the dialog system manager folder, under code, under managers, actions taken manager, right here. You're just gonna wanna go ahead and hook up a method that is the exact same name as your action taken. So ours was handshake and 
now that we have a method and you can notice this by right here when this trying to invoke that is the method that it's trying to invoke so as long as this method matches that method it should be good to go so now I'll just make sure I saved it yep saved it go over here to play and then when we go to Holly and talk to her it's hello can I shake your hand now we have in our console log the handshake but let's say that you wanted to dispense this somewhere else throughout your system. Well, we just go ahead and hook up an event to this. And because this doesn't need any parameters, we go ahead and just hook up a handshake event. And inside of this method, we just make sure that if that event is not equal to null meaning that we have some type of listener somewhere then we'll go ahead and fire off this event if we don't have a listener don't fire off the event and over here in players we're going to go on and include our using dialog system dot managers and here in our awake we're going to want to hook up the actions man the actions taken manager we're going to want to hook up that handshake to some method so to shake hands will be the method and we'll go ahead and generate this player shake hands which generates this new method right here this private void handshake we'll just in here put I shook someone can shake hands now when we go back over here click the play button go over to Holly Holly we Holly says, hello, can I shake your hand? You hit the continue button. Now that action fires off, which dispenses that event. The player is listening to the event, and the player does whatever logic he needs to do on the event. This is great for getting XP from quests, or adding an item to a player's inventory, or increases the player's health, or decreasing the player's health, firing off conversation to conversation. If you want one conversation to lead into the next conversation, this system is great for that so and that's basically it um, there's a couple other features like I said I'll go over in the other tutorials just kind of explaining all the customizations options of this dialog system and then I'll go over all the features in the conversation note editor but that's essentially how to get your conversation spun up in no time flat there's one more thing that I will show though um, for this one if you put a character's portrait and you name it after your NPC inside this character portraits folder under resources and dialogue system if you put that there and switch this to responses with portrait um, when we go to talk to that NPC the system knows to look in that folder and because this is named Holly that portrait pops up as Holly obviously Holly is very manly but now uh, it's the same thing so as long as you have a photo or you know whatever type of portrait you want for that player and it's named after the player that has the starter then you can plop it in there and turn that response to a portrait on it will automatically pick that up and put it into the scene for you but I'll go over all the customization in a different tutorial I hope this video helped and if you have any questions feel free to email me and I'll answer them as best as possible thank you Bye.